Greetings, fellow mortals, and welcome to episode four. I almost said five. I had to prompt him because he didn't know what he was talking about. This is the vacation planning special, all focused on Walt Disney World transportation. Yeah, you found you found two foolish mortals podcast again. Thanks for joining us. We're glad you're here today as we teased in yesterday's episode, we are talking about the Disney Skyliner. Yes. A new favorite of mine. Period. <laughs> I don't have a fun thing to say about this one. I don't have to be, I don't have like a, here we go, or something like that. Like, I don't have like a fun, like, arr, Skyliner, arr. <laughs> Let's just, let's just say, let's just call it what it is. You were not about this mode of transportation at all when it was first being developed, introduced, and right when it broke down the first time, you were like, I told you so! Oh, the first breakdown was the nail in the coffin for me when it came to the Skyliner, you, but... You weren't gonna go on it. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. My name's Kat. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Russ. And we are in it to win it today. Russ has, he has gone straight off the start line before I have even had an opportunity. The card is already ripped up, folks. We're just starting. We're just winging it. Okay, so the Disney Skyliner is the newest form of transportation at Walt Disney World. And probably one of the best. It is also modeled after, like, one of the original, like, gondola systems at Disneyland and maybe Disney World? I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. It's not It's not the best. Let's just... Okay. So, anyway. It's so, what it is, is it's a gondola. Gondola. Gondola system. Gondola. Uh, so, it's a, it's a bucket, basically. It's a bucket in the sky. That is riding along cables high in the sky over the Walt Disney World Resort. They're all themed to, like, they're all colorful. They're all themed to different things. There's, like, Haunted Mansion, all your favorite Disney characters. They're all, like, decorated. Well, most of them are. They are not air-conditioned. It's okay that they're not air-conditioned. We'll get more to that here in a second. Okay. And when I first heard about them, I was like, oh, heck No. No, you were You like, could not pay me to get in these things. No, you were not gonna you weren't gonna ride one. Mm-mm. Nope. Not at all. And here's why. It's not that I don't have a fear of heights. I don't. No, I have the fear of heights. You do. And who who even knew that you would like this as much as you do? But here's the big problem that I had with them. They are supposed to be able to hold, I think, eight to ten people. Yeah. And I was like, too many! Too many. It's like a boat. No. Bo bo boats, but worse. And you guys know, as we've talked about so far, they have shoved people in every other mode of transportation that we've discussed thus far. So when I was thinking, like, we're going to be in the sky with ten people in this tiny yeah. basket of a vehicle, that sounded like the world's worst experience to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't disagree with you, especially so we're not gonna. I'm not gonna uh, spoil any uh, details or anything. But yeah, the the idea that you're going into the gondola with ten other people, they're or, not well nine other people or whatever. Well, yeah, sure. There's ten bodies. There are ten ninety eight point six degree human beings in that vessel in the Florida sun. In the Florida sun with no air conditioning. Nah. Yeah, that's exciting. God. So. That that was what had me not wanting to go. And yeah. then right before our trip, they launched. And it was like a week into launch, they failed. And they didn't just fail. They failed miserably. Like did, Olympic failure. Well, no, if I'm not mistaken, did it happen twice where there was the crash and then the stall? Or is that <laughs> the same one? I think it was the same one. It was the same one. Okay. Um, But the major issue. So a few of them were crashing into each other in the uh, stations, um, which broke some glass, but honestly, I would have easily been fine with that compared mm -hmm. to the alternative, which were people who were stuck 
in these gondolas above Walt Disney World for hours and hours. And I don't, I don't remember the story, the whole story, like all the details. But essentially what, what I do remember is that like they hadn't worked out how to recover people. Yeah. From some parts of certain parts of it, yeah. The system. So like some parts were over water and they were like, oh no, what are we gonna do? They're, you know, sixty feet up in the air or whatever it is. And so um people were there stuck in these <laughs> stuck in these gondolas. Gondolas. Um and they had to like like there were trying to call on the intercom system because they have this intercom system they weren't getting through nope. like it was just a disaster it like bad. it was a disaster and they were like well here's some water and granola bars that we had in emergency kits and oh by the way here's a bag that you can relieve yourself in yay you know yeah, no bueno, <laughs> and so i was like never never gonna happen um but as it turns out Walt Disney World during Christmas will break even the strongest among us. Yeah, and you rode. And I did ride because Multiple times. we were so bored. And the, I know that sounds crazy, but the parks were so full of people. I was going to say, the, 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 that's, a, that's an inappropriate description. Okay, so bored. We were bored. Okay, it wasn't bored. Um, we were looking for an escape. <laughs> I'm being serious. I was looking for any way out of the parks because it's they so were so packed. crowded. And so I decided to do something that we've really never done before, or I've personally never done before, which was resort hop. We decided to do that. If you have never. Via the Skyliner. <laughs> if you've never resort hop, not necessarily with the Skyliner, but ever, if you've never done it, highly, highly recommend a day outside of the parks and just do it. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, um, and at that point, I'll be honest, it kind of grew on me. Yeah. Taking an actual ride on the Skyliner made me like the Skyliner. Mm hmm And here we are. So let's talk a little bit about the Skyliner itself. Yep. Like we said, they are these pods that can hold eight to ten people. And, um, they both have, so when you step in, there are benches on either side mm -hmm. and then there's a small row in the middle. Um, but I want to say they're pretty wide. The rows, maybe four feet wide in between. Yeah, like three. you could stick your feet out and touch the oh, yeah, bench yeah. on, on the other side. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 About four feet. Um, There's no air conditioning. No, just slats. But the Disney has like a airflow system, whatever they call it. It's, it's just it's just aerodynamically efficient to force air into the cabin, which is really great. Mm -hmm. We found that it was comfortable when we were riding. It moved air. Um, the downside is is that when you're not moving, neither is the air. No. So it is important to uh, keep in mind that. You know, there is no airflow when you're not pushing the air. Um, and that can make, I'm sure that can make it uncomfortable. I don't remember it being very uncomfortable for us, but we were also there in December. Yeah. So. The, and, and I think, uh, thankfully, you know, the, the direct the directions, the decorations of the skins that, are, you know, that house the, the gondolas that actually give them their theming. They second as obviously like a UV protectant to definitely yeah, reduce like, the intern inside heat. Yeah. For sure. So. Um, I also think that it's worth mentioning that at the time, and this was pre-pandemic, so mm -hmm. keep that in mind, um, there was only one other instance where we had to share yeah. the vehicle, the ride vehicle with someone else, and we only shared with two other people. That's, I would say that when they're putting 10 people in at a time, that has to be like when park closes and stuff like that. I'd be very curious to know if they ever actually did that. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe they did at first and then after it broke down, they were like, oh, no. And yeah. then they never did that again. I'm sure that it could fit 10 rather small people. Um, but 
you know, when you start to talk about people being in all different shapes and sizes and, you know, kids and adults. Strollers. I, no, there's no possible way. Yeah. Um, so. Here's an important fact. We mm -hmm. did not talk about actually where this thing works and goes from and to. Oh, that's another good point. So we did cover, like I just said, all the nitty gritty about yeah the details the of the itself. actual vehicle. But um, this, I think that's it though with the vehicle. That's pretty much it. Yeah, and it's just like any other, you know, like a bus stop or whatever. It, it swings in, you jump on, you swing out. It is constantly moving, Majority unless it, of the time. unless it has to stop for one reason or another. Yeah, but my down. point is, is like um, when you get to the stations, it doesn't stop for you to get out. No, I think there is only there are exceptions to that. Um, they can slow or stop mm -hmm. them if need be, which is why sometimes there are delays. But uh, for the average capable, um, it's no able-bodied, rather, I should say, person, just you walk on. Like if it was an Omnimover or a ride. That's, that's exactly how I was going to describe it. It's just an Omnimover. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, so the, the Skyliner itself... Um, stays and it well, stays uh, it's only in one uh, particular area of the disney resorts it is uh in epcot and can take you to caribbean beach um and then it goes from there it can also go out to hollywood studios and then it also connects to the you know, riviera mm -hmm. and as well as the um all-star resorts well, it's not the All Star Resorts. Not the All Star Resorts. Oh, sorry. Um, it's it, it's that general pop vicinity. Pop century but it is art of animation. Pop century art of animation. Yeah. Um. Now it does have. I think it is the Pop Century. Or the art of animation station. I don't want to mess um, it up for y'all. So let me double check. I second. know. I I feel like. I'm slacking here. Um. But we were at Pop Century. I think it's art of animation. Yeah, I think so. Um, but Pop Century was walking distance from that, so uh, you could pull it off. It's easy. literally dead center. It's, yeah, it's, it's between the two. Yeah, it's between the two. Um, that's why it's got me confused because I remember getting off and seeing Pop Century and being like, "Oh, there it is." Yeah. Um, so now the downside, that being that being said, mm -hmm. it's uh the location of the stations is probably the biggest downside. Of this Disney Skyliner. And I would say downside in quotes for that one. Yeah, very loosely. But I mean, if we're talking about all Disney transportation. Oh, yeah, for sure. Then it that's is, it, the it's the negative. Downside. It doesn't um, go everywhere. Much like boats. They don't go everywhere. They don't go everywhere. And right. neither does the Skyliner. Correct. Um, the Skyliner also is not operating on a loop, which is kind of a good and bad thing. So since it isn't operating on a loop, if you want to get to certain places, you're going to have to transfer at... The Caribbean Beach, like, transfer yeah, station. Yeah, that's the hub. Um, so it's not like, um, you know, for example, like the monorail, although there are two monorail loops. Mm -hmm. But it's right. not like a loop where you're going to be able to get to all of the places that the Skyliner goes by staying on the Skyliner. You're going to have to get off and get back on. Yep. Just like uh, public rail transportation if you live in a nearby, in the nearby city, in a city around mm -hmm. the United States or around the world. So, um, fortunately, when it comes to that, there's a lot of signage, so it's easy to understand, mm -hmm. and there are cast members who are very eager to help you get where you're going. So, it's not like you have to be, like, looking at a map or anything like that. You just know where you want to go, and they'll go, oh, over here, and then you go. Yeah, because I remember the first time we took it, we took it from Epcot, I think. Yeah, we took it from... No, Hollywood no, Studios. We took it from Hollywood Studios, and I was like, oh, dude, I'm wondering if we just stay on, and, like, this thing is just going to swing and send us on our way. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, that's actually the hub. Yeah. You know, and that's where you get off, and then you can pick and choose where you want to go from there, or if you just want to walk down, you're then you're in Caribbean Beach Resort, which yeah. is, first of all, that's an amazing resort. Yeah. Side note. Really great. I love that place. Um, But, yeah, so it's, it's pretty easy to use. I, like, there's so many good things about it. The only downside is that it... It it's is fixed. limited. It's fixed. In where it yeah. is. Yeah. Um, now, something that I think is really awesome about the Skyliner, and this is something you want to keep in mind if, like we said, you want to just resort hop or you want to get out of the parks for a second mm -hmm. and just kind of do something, the Skyliner is kind of a ride in and of itself. It is. It's 
It's like li it's like living with the land. It is like living with the land. So the cool thing about the Skyliner is that you don't just get on and go. It's actually like a tour. It really is. So you start to go, and wherever you happen to be going, whatever direction you happen to be going in, it is themed, so mm -hmm. they have, like, a fun little voice that comes on and says, like, you know, wave to your adoring fans below when you're mm -hmm. leaving yeah, you get some Hollywood there. Studios or whatever. It's fun facts. But it'll also give you fun facts, yeah, as you're Sorry. going through. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> it's a conversation, man. It'll also give you some fun facts about where you're passing over or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is. One thing, one thing I definitely like about it, like you said, it's like a ride. Um, you know, if your party's big enough and or if you're lucky enough like we were, um, you're by yourself. You're, mm -hmm. It's like you're in a, in a, in a self-driving Tesla kind of thing. It's dead quiet, mm -hmm. except for the voice, you know, talking and stuff like that. But you get a chance to, to breathe a little bit, to talk, you know, personally uh, between your party. And then you also get a, an amazing view 99.99% .99 of the time. I don't even think there is a bad view. No. When you're on we it. We had a good view every time. Every, yeah, it was beautiful. So, um, and I think the one thing that stinks is we didn't get to ride it at night. That's true. And I'm sure, like, especially now more than ever, and I really want to do it for this exact reason, is I want to take it from i want to take the skyliner from caribbean beach to epcot and i want to go by the get uh the um uh, france pavilion yeah and see uh gusto's sign all lit up and stuff like that that would be cool and let's be honest when it's going harmonious is going to be seen from the heavens yeah okay i'm sure you're gonna be able to see it from the skyliner as you're coming in now um currently mm -hmm. Just like with all other transportation, yeah. is only one party per Skyliner vehicle. So it's perfect. So that's great. It's nice. However, when you do have to share a vehicle, like Russ was just saying, you can kind of chat amongst your group. I will say that it is, because it is a circle, mm -hmm. basically, it's very loud when you're trying to chat if there's another set of people in there with you. Yeah, so we, I, we had a couple once. Yeah, so I don't think you can have, like, two independent conversations. Unless, like, if you're sitting across from each other. Because you're far enough that you have to project. Mm -hmm. But, like, when that couple was in there with us, we could definitely hear everything that they were saying. Yeah. Obviously. Oh, obviously, yeah, And it you're made right. it almost uncomfortable to talk as well. Like, we'd have to be, like, talking over them. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and it was, it was totally fine. I didn't care to... You know, not that I needed to talk to you, but yeah, it, it's definitely I don't something to talk to you either. Russ. It's something to keep. It's something to keep in mind. <laughs> yeah, I, the only reason I say that is because um, it is definitely relaxing. It's definitely a like a place where you could maybe like talk about the next thing you're gonna do, or talk about the first ride you're gonna try and go on once you get through the the gates or whatever. But I mean, it can be loud in there. If, if oh, you're I'm sharing sure. with multiple people, multiple, especially yeah. if there were like three parties in there, six people oh, all nice. trying to have conversations, I don't think that would work out very well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I know, but I like the Skyliner. Yeah, I love it. Um, One of my favorites. The only other downside that I do want to mention, and <laughs> we go into all details about this over on twofoolishmortals.com. So go on over there, find the search bar and type in Skyliner. Um, if you're a person who is not good with heights, maybe this isn't the vehicle, this isn't the experience for you. Sure. Um, if you are a person who struggles with motion sickness, you should be aware that if your Skyliner stops or if the Skyliner stops, yeah. that forward momentum, yeah, you swing, um, stops and you start to swing a little bit freely. Um, mm. I don't want to say it as though it's like, you're flying all over the place, because that's no. not the case. But, if, you but have a, if you're sensitive to that kind of stuff, you know, you're well, going to feel it. It's a noticeable amount. Like, I oh, don't want to... especially taking off? You definitely, like, you yeah. come, you come up on a ramp. Bless you, fuzzy <laughs> mortal. Um, yeah, we didn't introduce them, but the two fuzzy mortals are in here with us as well. Um... So that's definitely something to keep in mind. For sure. Because if you 
if you get stopped for five, ten minutes, which can happen, mm -hmm. you can find yourself kind of swinging back and forth, especially on a rainy day. And that might not necessarily be comfortable for everyone in your party. Um, and it could definitely ruin your day if, uh, if motion sickness hits you hard. Yeah, for sure. But um, also, they are wheelchair, wheelchair accessible. Mm -hmm. They can slow down... Um, quite a bit but they're also they also have the ability to pull cars off so that you can load your wheelchair mm -hmm. as well so that's something to keep in mind i haven't had personal experience with this but i have <laughs> thankfully i was not broken for that part of the yeah, trip right um but i've seen it happen and it it's very seamless easier than the bus not as easy as the boat much easier than the bus mm -hmm. so there's that. Yep. Anything else you have to say about the Skyliner? Oh, man. It's, uh, it's going to be a battle between the Skyliner and the monorail, I you think. You think so? Yep. For my second favorite. Hmm. Well, we'll have to see what happens tomorrow when we wrap up this conversation about transportation, talking about the monorail. <sighs> But until then, we would love to know what you guys have to say about the Disney Skyliner. Have you ever ridden on it before um are you looking forward to it are you like a hard no like i was tell us all about it by visiting twofoolishmortals.com clicking on that menu and hitting that summon button you can contact us directly right there you can also join the jamboree on facebook.com slash groups slash two foolish mortals or you can follow us on instagram <clears throat> at two foolish mortals see all the fun fun pictures and and all that stuff um we also go live on instagram the first of every month and we do some lives over on the two foolish mortals jamboree so make sure that you join us over there as well yeah definitely come over check it out yeah but um that pretty much does it for today guys i just want to say thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow so we can wrap up this discussion yeah Definitely want to hear you guys' thoughts on the Skyliner. And on every other part of transportation. How did they rank for you so far? You Boats know? are at the bottom, Boats Catherine. are at the bottom? Sunk at the bottom of the Seven Seas Lagoon. Is it like a Pirates of the Caribbean situation where like the boats just like come up from the depths and then there's... Well, that would make it worthwhile to get on one. That would be <laughs> sick. It'd be like, a, like an undead like duck boat from Boston. Oh, boy. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for joining us. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye.